Okay, so uh, again, I, I know I just mentioned it, but uh, last year uh, the Lord gave me a word, and I remember He brought it back to my remembrance this morning. And one of it, the word was about fear, and I'm going to talk about that just just a little bit this morning. So let me go ahead and stop this music so we can uh, get into the word. I'm going to turn my my uh, video on. Uh, let me see here. All right. <clears throat> so starting 2022, uh, the word, one of the words that the Lord gave me was remain faithful. Uh, let's look at it in 2 Timothy 3, verse 14. Um, 2 Timothy 3, yeah. Uh, 14. Verse 14 says, but you must remain faithful to the things you have been taught. You know they are true. For you know, you can trust those who taught you. You have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood, and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Jesus Christ. All Scripture is given or is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. So, sorry, um, <clears throat> the word that the Lord gave me was, and I, I, that's, that's the only really word he really gave me was remain faithful. So God is telling his people for the, throughout, for the rest of this year from 2022 is to be faithful. Um, let's go here and see what the word faithful mean. So faithful, be faithful means remaining loyal and steadfast. So God said remain loyal and steadfast to who? To him, to the word, to your family, to people, to the community. He said remain loyal and remain steadfast, but mostly, mainly remain steadfast to God. If we remain steadfast to God and to his word, everything else will fall in place. So God wants us to remain, always to remain faithful uh, throughout this year, to be steadfast. To be steadfast means to be unmovable. It means that whatever comes, whatever situation comes, whatever circumstance may, that may come in your life that is designed to shake you, he said, don't be shaken, but remain faithful. So the trick of the enemy is to get you to not be faithful to the things of God, get you to not be faithful to your family, to get you to convince you to not be faithful to, on your job or, or in, in, in any area of your life. That is the plan and the trick of the enemy to try to get you to not be faithful. But God says, remain faithful. The, the word of God even says that a faithful man or woman will abound in blessings. He says, uh, blessings follow those who are faithful. All right, you can even, it's, it, it's even um, uh, um, uh, an example on your job. If you are faithful and coming to work on time, every time and doing what you're supposed to do and even going above and beyond, you will get promoted. You will, the, the blessing of promotion will come upon your life because you are faithful and you, are, you, you have proven to be faithful. And God said the same thing in his word. If you are faithful to him and don't back down, give up, cave in and quit, because I'm telling you things are coming in, uh, in the world and, and in our lives that will challenge our faithfulness to God. Your faith will always be tested. And the good thing about the faith being tested and you passing the test is that when you pass the test, God always elevates your faith to another level. And when your faith is elevated to another level, then you are able to, when, when people look at your life and they see how you are faithful and going through the things that you, you've been going through and still remaining steadfast and unmovable, that in turn will affect how will affect their faith because they can look at your life and see that you're still faithful to God no matter what you're going through no matter what you're dealing with that will motivate them and inspire them to keep going okay so 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 I just want to say this also that being a Christian doesn't mean that it's always going to be a, a bed of roses it is being a Christian Christian doesn't mean that Jesus is going to take away all your all your pain 
He's going to take away all your trouble. He's going to take away all your trials. Matter of fact, matter of fact, he more likely is going to allow you to go through some trials and then he's going to show you that he's with you in the trial. Okay, so remain faithful. One of the tactics of the enemy to get you from being faithful is fear. It's fear. I said this last year and I said it. I said it. Um, somebody's trying to come in. I said this last year and I, I spoke it based upon the current pandemic that we were that we are in, that we were in at the time that we are still in and what the government was going to do as far as um, uh, convincing you to do certain things. Oh, should I say convincing or should I say coercing you to do certain things? And they was going to do that through the avenue of fear, using fear. And we can see even through this whole year that even our own government has used fear to try to get some of us to take the vaccine and try to uh, force different things that uh, force us into different political aspects and so forth and so on. They use that tactic of fear and it's going to be more of the same this year. And that's why being faithful is so important. Being faithful is so important to the word of God, being faithful to your values, being faithful to your convictions. Be faithful to that because God, when you are faithful, I'm going to use my sister here in a minute with um, uh, her testimony. Uh, being faithful, God will always come through. So my sister was trying, was the uh, did not want to take the vaccine, right? And her job was threatening her to take the vaccine. But, and she held true to her beliefs. She held true to her conviction. She said, I don't feel like God wants me to take this vaccine. And up until the last day when Alabama finally passed the law, or, or the, the Supreme Court finally up, up, up held the law, um, up, up held the ruling of not needing uh, um not mandating a, a vaccine and they couldn't force her to take that vaccine. So um, I wish she was on her. She could tell it better than I can. But and when she told me that I was said, I said, man, that's awesome because you you stayed faithful and God blessed your faithfulness. You stayed true to your conviction and God blessed it. He overturned some things. God will overturn some things in your life when we remain faithful. So this is the word of the year to continue to remain faithful. Now, now the trick of the enemy is to get you off of being faithful by using fear. So I, I wrote in here, one of the devil's wiles is the use of fear tactics. He threatens evil consequences upon those who trust and obey the Lord. What is fear? It's a painful emotion or passion excited by an expectation or evil of evil or the apprehension of impending danger. He want you and I to think that something is going to happen if we don't follow what he is trying to get us to follow. So he, so what the enemy does is put in your mind, if you don't do this, this danger can happen to you. But we must quench that thought with the word of God. We must quench that thought with our faithfulness to the word of God. No weapon formed against us will prosper. That's what the word of God says. Anytime fear rises up in your heart or fear tries to rise up in your heart, um, you have to use the word of God to quench that particular uh, tactic um, or weapon that the enemy is trying to use against you. And you, we, one of the words we can use, it, 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 one of the words we can use is no weapon form devil. It may be form, but it will not prosper. It may not, it will not work. The, 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 the law of being, um, the mandate of taking a vaccine was formed, but it did not work. In my sister's case, it did not prosper. That weapon was formed, but it did not prosper. So this is, that's, this is what the Lord is saying to us, remaining faithful and using the word of God against the wiles and tricks of the enemy. And here's another thing. As we remain faithful and steadfast in God, this is what Psalms 91 says, a thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it won't come near you. If we are faithful in the things of God, things will happen all around us, 
but it won't come near us. I remember being in Iraq in 2013, when we were 2003, we was going through the, um, traveling through the desert and going in, in the war. Um, things, I saw so many, Psalms 91 was the Bible verse that I quoted every day while we was going through that war, every day. And I and literally saw things happening around us, but it never came near us. That was so amazing to me. So many people were going through, so many people seeing so many bodies and so forth and so forth all uh, on the battlefield, but none of that stuff came near us. And God is saying today, if we, if we are faithful and we remain faithful in the things of God, we'll see a lot of things happening around us. A thousand will fall at our side and 10,000 at our right hand, but it will not come near us. It will not come near us because you are faithful, you're remaining faithful in the things of God. So that's that's particularly uh, my portion of the word uh, for the new year that um, uh, the Lord gave me. It wasn't nothing extravagant, nothing that is too prophetic, but this is what the Lord says. He says, and I think that when we do this, when we remain faithful in the things of God, remain faithful to the word of God, remain faithful to our families, remain faithful to our communities, remain faithful and steadfast and unmovable. When we do that, these things, that these, these things, these pandemics and pandemics, as we want to say, that are coming upon us, he says, you will not be shaken. God has shaken the earth. But those that are rooted and grounded in him will not be shaken. God has shaken up things and shaken up foundations and he's shaken them up. And he's even allowed some things to happen to test and shake our faith and to, 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 to test our faith. But if we are rooted and grounded in him, those things, only those things that are him will be left standing. All of those things that are him will be left standing. So the shaking is coming. The shaking is already here, and this more shaking is coming. I, I don't. I, I think for the, for the world, it's not going to get any better. But for the child of God, as we remain in Him, we will not be shaken. We'll look at those things around us. We will look at those things around us. A thousand will fall at our side, and ten thousand at our right hand, but it will not come near us. So remain faithful in the things of God. God bless you. Whoever God bless you. God bless you. Um, that was an awesome PowerPoint, um, Prophet Anthony. It uh, it was a blessing to me, and I didn't realize that it was a, uh, we were supposed to have something so structured. I definitely definitely would have had my powerpoint ready as i have in time past but thank you for that i'm going to go ahead and mention what i have prepared that god gave me he pretty much told me to tell the people that you have to endure the rain in order to get to the rainbow first peter 5 and 10 says but the god of all grace who have called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Hebrews 10 and 36 says, for ye have need of patience, or as some versions say, endurance, that after ye have done the will of the Lord, ye might receive the promise. And we know that God's rainbow represents the promise. That is why he said you have to endure the rain in order to get to the rainbow. Now, uh, a few things, a few points that I'm going to mention, you might have heard me kind of bring it up uh, in the past, but he's kind of tying this in to what he's given me for this year. So I just want to say uh, God was showing me that patience or endurance and the perseverance of faith, it well pleases him. In the Bible, when God instructed Noah to build the ark, while he was building that ark, Noah listened to complaints, insults, persecution for over 100 years, and yet he didn't give up or ultimately charge God foolish. Just like Noah, when we have a purpose, a task to complete, no matter how long it takes or how others and subtles or 
insult us or try to discourage us. We have to please God regardless and endure until the end and reap, we will reap the greatest benefits. So just like Noah, we have to endure the rain to get to the rainbow. Yes, he had to endure natural rain, but there was also spiritual rain in his life that he faced. But thank God in the end, he received that beautiful rainbow, which was God's promise. And so my next point is what he showed me concerning the rain. You know that the rain is the messy part. It's often cold and dark times in that place during the rain and sometimes accidents here and there. So sometimes during our spiritual storms or the rain, we may accidentally do or say things that we didn't anticipate due to not being able to see our way as clearly as we desire. So we have to repent and we have to endure through that and keep pressing no matter what accidents come, just like during the rain, accidents come. But don't give up keep pressing, keep enduring. You know, we don't want to willfully sin. I'm not condoning willfully sinning, but if you have an accident or mistake here, get back up, get back in line, keep on pressing. No, it doesn't feel good or look good being in that place when you're going through. That's the unattractive part of the rain. But the beautiful part is knowing that the rainbow is coming after the rain and then the sunshine beauty and promises of a better day are on the way. So let me tell you, one day I was sitting around just talking to the Lord. I love to have conversations with the Lord. And so I was just wondering why life looks so, so beautiful for a certain season in my life that I was focusing on at that time. And then all of a sudden things change. So I was like, well, Lord, you know, it's not that I can't find the beauty in some of the things that I'm going through, even though, you know, it's, it's a lot of trials and, and difficult times. I still can find the beauty in things. But if any of you will know, you know that I'm not complaining. You know that there are some times in our lives when things look more beautiful and it's ongoing. It's ongoing for a season. But I was going through a season where it wasn't as ongoing and I had to press and I had to encourage myself and tell myself, I'm going to find the beauty in this. There's a song, you know, uh, that says, I command, I command my spirit to praise the Lord. So sometimes I had to praise God and, 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 and just to, to feel uplifted and, and God would lift the burden through me praising him. So anyway, when I told God that, you know, one day, you know, at one point, Things seemed so beautiful and it was ongoing. And then all of, a thing, all of a sudden things changed. This is what he told me. He said, what about Job? He said, think about how beautiful life was for Job at one time. And then you all know the story. He lost all of his children. He lost his possessions. His health failed. And many of us don't even go through all the things that Job went through. And even after all of this, the one person that he thought would be by his side, his wife, and support him, she told him to, to curse God and die. Do you know how difficult that had to be? But he kept his integrity. He endured. And guess what? At the end of the story, you've heard it before, he got double for his trouble because he kept pressing. He endured. So he endured the rain in order to get to the rainbow. That beautiful promise in the end, he got more than what he had before God gave him double. Man, how awesome is that? That is wonderful. I'm like, Lord, so God, God reminded me, look, look at how the story of Job ended. So, and then not only that, he reminded me of how Job pretty much, and I'm paraphrasing, Job pretty much when when, when these trials came up on Job, he pretty much said, uh, you know, who am I that I can't endure these tough times, these evil times, these difficult times, after all God has done for me, after all the wonderful blessings he's bestowed upon me, who am I to now give up on him and say, I'm not going to go through this just because this has come up on me. It was just for a season. So he endured the rain until he got to the rainbow. That is so awesome. And so uh, the next thing I talked to God about, I was saying, okay, Lord, you know, I've been praying about such and such. And, you know, it wasn't like he was giving me it's, but you know how sometimes when you're praying to God, it's like he's pouring and pouring into you. There was a particular situation I had and I was praying about it. 
and God wasn't saying much. You know, he'll give me bits and pieces here and there. But uh, he, he finally answered me and said, I have been listening to you all month. In other words, I hear you. I may not be saying much, but I'm observing everything that you're saying. I'm taking it in and I will answer in due time. I had to endure and keep pressing. And there will be times I would pray um, and, and, and was looking for God to encourage me, which many times he did. But sometimes, you know what he would just tell me, endure, endure. And a lot of times I would say, Lord, did you really just say that? I'm kind of going through right now. I wanted you to say something more exciting and remind me of your promise. But guess what? I had to encourage myself and I had to endure. Sometimes that would be the only word he would give me. And I would just have to press and press. And sometimes I would cry. But, you know, it's okay to cry sometimes. I wouldn't have a pity party. But I would just cry. And I say, okay, Lord, thank you for at least telling me that he will remind me. Keep pressing. You got to endure. So, listen, your rainbow is coming. Don't quit. You must have genuine faith that possesses the capacity to continually trust in God and the promises of his word for the duration of your life through all disappointments, through all distresses, through your trials, through your tribulations. This is called perseverance. Being a Christian requires courage and endurance. Endure, people of God. While you patiently wait on God, you can trust him to lift your burdens. I've said it before. One day I heard God say, there's a U-Haul for your call. So call on God and he will lift what is too heavy for you to carry and take it to a place far away so that you don't have to worry about carrying that load. That is what I heard in my spirit when he said there's a U-Haul for your call. And that's what he wanted me to know. He will help you to endure through those rainy days that are coming. You know, we sometimes people think, like uh, Prophet Johnny was saying, um, that you know everything's going to be peaches and cream all you know all the time but you're not going to be in the clouds all the time and on the mountain top you're going to have some rainy days these are things that help us to grow so hold steadfast to your faith regardless of your troubles that come your way hold on and prosper through adversity knowing that god will make a way god is here for you through any struggle only his help can help you to conquer keep fervently praying and expect the change help is on the way your rainbow is coming keep enduring Oh, what a wonderful relief it will be when that when God's promises arrive in our lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So genuine faith perseveres. I heard him talking about being faithful. You got to keep the faith. Genuine faith perseveres. Let me strongly exhort you and it's stress that we can hold fast to the beginning of our assurance, firm until the end. You've come too far to give up now. I promise you a great reward awaits you if you trust God and endure until the very end. In. that rainbow God's promise is coming if you just hold on just a little while longer and the other thing that God told me to tell you for many of you just when you thought you had to fight you instead are about to have a Jericho experience I was like wow so what am I saying instead of fighting and wrestling with the situation praise him through it and shout the victory and watch the walls fall down that have been blocking your blessings and impeding your progress. Sometimes the rain blocks your vision and impedes your progress, but God is gonna turn that thing around. And y'all, I got a personal experience just yesterday. I had this very, very sick feeling. And uh, Prophet Anthony had told me to pray about uh, God giving me what to share with you all. And so, God had given me what I just what I just mentioned to you about the Jericho experience. And uh, New Year's Eve night, I was on our church prayer line. Well, we, we actually had like a, a service that night where we kind of testified and gave different words and things like that. And so the Lord, he, he told me to share that particular, um, that particular part with some of the people that were on the line. And so he reminded me yesterday he said, he told me to take my own advice. He said, what you shared with them last night, he said, apply it to yourself right now. Again, I had a sick feeling and God said, just when you thought you were about to have, when you were, you were gonna have to fight, you instead are about to have a Jericho experience. So he reminded me to shout. 
And y'all, I was not feeling my best, but I pressed and I praised God and I prayed. And guess what? He lifted that sick feeling. So just when you thought you had to fight, God is going to give you that Jericho experience. He is not going to let you fight and wrestle with that situation. If you praise him and you shout the victory, the walls will fall down and, and, and everything that's been blocking your blessings and impeding your progress, God is going to work it out. And I said, Lord, I did not feel like even saying much, but because I pressed and I praised God in the midst of it, guess what? I got my Jericho experience and I thank God because I endured through that. I was pressing and I was praying and I endured and I shouted for the victory. It wasn't very, very, very loud or extremely forceful, but I did what I could do through the trial that I was going through and God turned it around. And you know, in the Bible, it talks about the sacrifice of praise. And I've told you many times how uh, there's deliverance in your praise. So there's this song even like I said, you know, when you don't feel like it, that's that's why it's, God refers to it as a sacrifice of praise, which is offering the fruit of your lips. So there's a song that a lot of uh, children, uh, well, really a lot of them, I know in a lot of the Kojic churches that I've gone to, especially mine, they would love to sing this song. Uh, I command my spirit to praise the Lord. I command my spirit to praise the Lord. I command my spirit to praise the Lord. Spirit, praise the Lord. Spirit, praise the Lord. So I got that in my spirit. I didn't feel like it, but I said, Lord, these little children were on fire and they would just be praising God. Little children, you all, praising God because these, even these little children, Say, I'm commanding my spirit to praise the Lord. And yes, sometimes even children go through different things at their young age. And they said they were commanding their spirit to praise the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to command my spirit to praise you and shout for the victory. And I'm getting my Jericho experience. I'm going to endure the rain until I get to the rainbow. And I have just a few more things. So I just want to tell you in my closing, rise up and resist the devil just like Nehemiah refuse to be distracted by the enemy and, and I say the enemy because as I was saying about the Jericho experience you know they thought they were gonna have to fight these enemies but God gave them that Jericho experience all they had to do was shout and the walls fell down so refuse to be distracted by the enemy just like Nehemiah wait patiently keep the faith and your focus and God will reveal restore like he did for Jeremiah what has been torn down broken in your life if you only trust him and you set your face like a flint hallelujah glory hey hallelujah thank you Jesus set your face like a flint when met with opposition while pursuing your God-given dreams your God-given desires your God-given text forget about what forget about the haters and the naysayers what did God say whose report will you believe endure until the end and you will receive your reward here and in the world to come reason within yourself and come to the realization that the rain you endure helps you to grow just as it does a beautiful flower hallelujah thank you jesus that is the same beauty that you will possess after the rain you have to endure the rain in order to get to the rainbow god's great promises await you receive it in the mighty name of jesus and one more scripture i want to mention Galatians 6 and 9 says and let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not and in addition to what prophet Johnny was saying he was telling us pretty much to when you do what God is leading you to do how you will get that promotion how you'll be uh, because you're faithful you'll be promoted and just yesterday I posted uh when you obey God's instructions, miraculous things can happen. And that just happened for me. So I just had to add that to what he said. And I thank him for what he said because it was so on time. And, and it, it, it was uh, also confirming things that God had told me. So I thank God 
for what he said and I thank God for allowing me this opportunity. Thank you, Prophet Anthony, for inviting me on and allowing me to share so many times on your on this Zoom. It has been a blessing. I thank God for this new year. I'm expecting great things. I love each of you and I'm praying for each of you. And as I said, you have to endure the rain in order to get the, get to the rainbow. That is God's word for 2022. God bless you. Amen. 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 Happy whole 2022 New Year's to you all. Such uh, powerful words went forth. Remain in faith because the weapons will prosper. I mean, will come, but they will not prosper. Endure the rain until you get to the rainbow. Rise up and resist the enemy. No distractions, which leads you on to what God gave me. It's all a part of all they said. It's what he gave me. That's how you can make your relationship whole. God is saying today, make your relationship whole. He's talking about so whole until you are inseparable. Uh, so whole until you become one with him. He's talking about so whole until you finish his sentences, my God, because you have hidden his word in your heart and out of it is only coming his word. God is saying with a soft voice, make the relationship whole. So hold until no matter what problem, situation, or disease the enemy creates or come up with, you will stay in the peace. You will stay in the place of safety. And that is in the ship, the relationship with God. Once in the ship, you can operate out of a place of the wisdom of God and not fear, doubt, or unbelief. Just like the three Hebrew boys. They told the king, we're not going to eat your food. We, well, that was Daniel, too. He was another one. We're not going to bow to you, king. We're not going to do the things you want us to do. We're going to believe God because we know that he's able to deliver us. And even if he don't deliver us, we still not going to bow to you. So, yes, the situation before them was real. Yes, the king was real. And hell, yes, the fiery furnace, the fiery furnace was real. That's right. I said hell because that's where it came from. Hell. It comes to get God's faithful people out of God's mind of peace and into confusion, disbelief, chaos. So yes, the three Hebrew boys stay in the ship, the relationship with God and boldly professed it and said, even if he don't deliver us, we still won't be afraid of your scare tactics. God is saying, stay in the ship, the relationship, and he will add everything else to you. Matthew 6 and 33 tell us that. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Maintain the relationship. And even uh, greater than the three Hebrew boys, it's like Jesus, who, who, who even laid down his life for us because he was in a relationship with the God, with God the Creator. Once you maintain a relationship, then you won't be so soon shaken to get out of the heat. Uh, to get out when the heat is turned up in your situation and in this world because if you stay in the ship, the relationship, then God won't let you burn. He won't let you sink. He won't let you drown and he sure won't let you die. And then glory, hallelujah, you can say to these things, you can say to these things that the enemy is showing you just like Jesus. Uh, he showed Jesus a lot of things, but Jesus told him what to do. Get behind me. We can say to these things that, that the enemy is throwing at us. I am a Romans 3. I am a Romans 8 and 35 kind of faith. I am a relation a Romans 8 and 35 and 39 relationship. Who shall separate me from the love of God? Said so tribulation, distress, persecution, nakedness. No, mm -mm. nay. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. For we must be fully persuaded to be in this relationship, to make this relationship whole. Fully persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, which is everything that's happening in the world today, which is things that to come, which is things that's in the spirit realm have manifest yet, nor heights, nor death, nor any other creature to be to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So I want to continue to by reading the rest of what God gave me with no interruption. He said, make the relationship whole. It's time to sound the alarm. How can you sound the alarm for which you did not hear? It's time to sound the alarm and educate my people. 
on these last days tricks of the enemy. He, the enemy, is coming in with a whole lot of noise and confusion and repeating it over and over again to program you to be in a one-sided relationship and feel like you have to make all the decisions and make something happen. So you leave your place of wholeness with me to follow a lie. Oh, he is good. Uh, didn't I tell you that at the end time, if it would be possible that my very elect would be deceived? Don't underestimate his trickery and his lies. Oh yes, uh, they all originate from him. He is the father of them. The only way to truly defeat the devil, the liar, the enemy, that old Satan, is to make the relationship whole. Did not my only son make and keep the relationship whole? He, even he, Jesus, was so whole, he thought it not robbery to be equal to me, God. In other words, we were not one-sided. We were two who walked together in agreement. In order to shut down the enemy, the Satan, that Satan, the devil, make the relationship whole. Time to open our spiritual eyes, walk by faith, the real faith that I gave you, not the one that hangs on the wall, around your neck, or, or come in a religious saying. No, my faith that I gave unto you, that faith that one that activates, that once it's activated, can do something. Yes, that faith. It will move things. Faith will move prayer to be effective. And when prayer is effective, then the results will be automatic. And you shall know me, not know of me only, really, really know me intimately until we are one. And then the real you will be allowing me to do what I planned before the beginning of time by creating me in you to rule, to replenish, and subdue the earthly realm. It's time out for things, situations, principalities, and wickets in any place dictating how my earth shall be ran and what shall enter my earth realm. Did not I give you the dominion to name and call things as you see them and not the earthly and emotional or factual realm? but call it like I created it to be. Call a man a man, a woman a woman, and a dog a dog. Stop cross missing. Stop cross mixing, even in your joking and laid back time. Say no more, what's up dog, to a human being. Let a dog be a dog, and a man be a man, and a woman be a woman. How can you be free indeed if you allow your mouth to bind your every bind you every day by what you say, the word is not in you, uh, in your mouth, and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith. That <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> that we proclaim it. It will be what you say. No more one-sided relationships. How? I mean, have I ever given? you yet another part of me and Jesus the Christ my son to allow you to always have access to me even when you even when you when you when you love sin more than me who created you like me and gave you everything that you would ever need I even I God created all things uh, and, uh, and I never kept anything from you I even God made uh, everything easily accessible to you everything you need and everything that you didn't need so you could see for yourself when I God creator has done what I have done and I God creator still refuses to be in a one-sided relationship I gave you freely the ability to choose even to choose whether to love me hate me with whether you agree with me would you acknowledge me or not? Would you listen to me or would you disobey me? The I, the Lord God creator of all things have need of you and always have. The only thing changes, uh, the only thing changed in the relationship is you. You chose to call on me when you need me 
to praise me and give me credit only when it's religiously involved. I, God, never changes. I, even knowing that you would lose the way to me, which is through my son, Jesus Christ, still gave you more of me to get the relationship back to the oneness, to wholeness. Uh, we once, to the wholeness we once had. I, God creator, gave you a part of me in the Holy Spirit who is a real person who you still treat like me and spend little time with him until you need him. The Holy Spirit, he is the, the one most important person to you on this earth. No more one-sided relationship. Allow me in to lead you to all truth and accept me who is the way, the truth, and life in Jesus the Christ to show you how it's really done and what to really say to keep this relationship whole because Jesus is my only son. Only freely, he only freely chooses to say what I say and to do what I said. No matter who or what comes against you, they don't realize that they are coming against me in you. And therefore, it will not and cannot prosper when you choose to allow the relationship to be one-sided, then unfortunately, problems and situations are, are, are only see you. And that's why you get to, that's why you feel the heat of the fire and the wetness of the water. And, 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 and that, but that it won't drown you. However, I got the creator is still there. So I will not allow it to take you out. I am, I am waiting on you to come out of your one-sidedness, which is all about you and allow me to do my part and defeat my enemies that you cannot even see. Make the relationship whole. Then I will show you all the tricks of the enemy. That old Satan, how he uses the media, the TV, the news, social media, computers, advertisement, and more to get fearful, uh, to get people fearful and afraid and to confuse and dismay you. Make the relationship whole because I need you to see what I see, the truth, and sound the alarm to all that have an ear. Be forewarned that all will not gladly receive the truth Therefore, I need you to stay in the ship at all times because there is safety in the ship, direction in the ship. There is instructions in the ship. Make the relationship whole. Two is better than one, especially when the one is God, Abba, the creator of all things. God bless. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the word. Hallelujah. All right. I just want to give an opportunity for uh, anyone else to share um, what the Lord has given them for uh, this year, this new year. If anyone has an unction or uh, uh, a sense that God is leading them or uh, giving them a word for the body of Christ. So if you're on the phone, just we have to press star six to uh, unmute yourself. Then if you are um, <clears throat> if you're on the Zoom video, just uh, unmute yourself and go ahead and speak. Introduce yourself and tell us who you are, then please share with us what uh, the word of the Lord is. All right, well, I guess uh, no one has a word. Only one wants to share a word. Anyway, so what we're going to do is go ahead and close out and thank God for the word today. Uh, the word that we received today was remain faithful. Um, endure the rain. In order, you have to endure the rain in order to get the rainbow and make your relationship whole. What all points to me is staying in God. Staying in God building our relationship with him, staying faithful to him, and enduring hardness as a good soldier. Paul told Timothy to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He said, we have to endure it. 
and there's some hard times that are coming. And I, I don't mean to be a bearer of bad news or uh, what they call it, a doomsday prophet, but um, in this world, Jesus said, you will have tribulation. And he said, in me, you have peace. And he says, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And the fortunate thing is we are in him. At the same time, we are in the world, living in the world. The word of God says, live in the world, but be not of the world. We are not of the world. We are not of this place, but we are of him, the world, the world system, how the world operates, how the world does things. We are in him. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. So remain faithful. Remember this, you have to endure the rain in order to get the rainbow. And make your relationship whole in Christ Jesus. Father God, thank you for the word of God this morning. Thank you, for God, for encouraging us and keeping our minds straight, fixed, and concentrated on you. Help us to make our relationship whole throughout this year, Father. Help us to remain faithful throughout this year, Father. And help us to endure the rain until we get to the promise that you have promised us. In the name of Jesus, bless every person that's listening by ear that will listen to hear this message, God, as we go forth. God, I pray for this new year. I pray protection around your people for this entire new, for this entire year, God. I pray for provision for your people for this entire year in the name of Jesus. I pray for uh, blessings upon blessings this entire year in Jesus name. I think that there shall be many promotions that, that shall come to the people of God as they remain faithful in him. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, O oh God. I praise your name. I thank you, Father God, that there, may, there will be many doors open. There will be many doors of opportunity to minister that will open this year for those that are called to be ministers of God as you remain faithful in him. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father God, for this now. I give you praise for this now. I thank you for miracle working power. I thank you for health and healing. I feel a healing anointing even now in Jesus' name. That's that part of your body that needs to be healed. I feel that somebody, somewhere in their back, even in their upper back, need to be healed. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for healing right now, Father. Somewhere in the kidney area, in the stomach area, Father, need to be healed. We pray for that now. We thank you for health and healing now. We rebuke the spirit of cancer. We command that thing to go now. We command that thing to take up its weapon and then flee. Uproot yourself and go in the name of Jesus, that spirit that's causing cancer now. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord God, that someone that need, that need healing in their ears, God, in their ears, in their sinus areas. And right now, in Jesus' name, be healed in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for it now in Jesus' name. I give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Health and healing and deliverance in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father God, for health, healing, and deliverance in the name of Jesus. Those that are struggling with substance abuse God, in the name of Jesus, those that are struggling with secretly with substance abuse, I bind this spirit of whoredom that is causing substance abuse. In Jesus' name, when I speak deliverance over the lives of your people, even now in Jesus' name, I bind the spirit of heaviness and de heaviness and deception, heaviness and depression and deception now in Jesus' name. Uh, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, demons speaking lies to you, speaking lies into your ears. The devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father God. We bind that spirit now. We bind those spirits now and command them to loose now and go, especially the spirit of depression and heaviness. In the name of Jesus, I command you to go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. You are worthy to be praised. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you guys for being on. We're on every every Sunday morning at nine o'clock. One of us is uh, one of us will be teaching. And every Thursday morning at 5 a.m. Central Standard Time, we will be praying. Corporate prayer. We thank God for you. God bless you. If you want to be a part, just tune in. God bless you. Happy New Year. Y'all have a great time. Happy New Year. Well, God bless you all. And I receive my healing. I receive that prayer. In Jesus', Jesus name.